Hello and welcome to my garage. Today I'll be talking you through the compression test procedure for an MGB. The test itself is fairly straightforward to do and it's an easy way of seeing if you've got problems with either head gasket, valves or piston rings in your car. The only specialist tool you need is the compression tester. This is a Gunson one here. It's, uh, it's fairly basic, um, not particularly expensive either, but it, it does the job. And the only other thing you'll need is a, is a spark plug wrench, so we'll, uh, we'll get started. In order to run the test, what we need to do is remove the spark plugs and then we fit the uh, threaded parts of the gauge into the spark plug hole. I'm going to take all four out, it just means the engine turns over a bit easier. I'll also disconnect the electronic ignition on this car to stop the coil getting warm while we're, while we're cranking over. So let's get these uh, plugs out of the way first. When you take the plugs out, it is worth leaving them on the side, on the desk, in the order they came out, just so you can have a look at them and see what each cylinder's doing. So that's all four plugs out. I'll also disconnect the coil so it doesn't get too warm and I'm going to disconnect the uh, fuel pump at the rear as well. Now we're ready to fit the test gauge and start the test. So we'll put the, uh, the tester in cylinder one to start off with. It just needs to be screwed in hand tight. There we go. And then I tend to just sort of rest it on top you don't really want it falling in the engine if you can, but I think that will hopefully, hopefully sort of stay where it is, and you'll be able to see you'll be able to see the uh, the compression when I turn the engine over. Okay, now for the first run, I'm actually going to do this with the throttle closed. With the Weber carburetor, we should see a difference between the two uh, the two readings on the gauge. With the SUs, it shouldn't matter quite so much, but let's uh, go ahead and do the first test. So to run the test we have the ignition on, car out of gear and as I said for this one I'm not going to put the throttle down just to see if there's a difference on the reading so just press the starter. I let it turn over 10 times, um, you could probably do it a little bit less than this but I find 10 gives you uh, an accurate reading so let's, uh, let's get it started. Okay, so that was 10, so back off again and we'll see what the gauge says. So in the engine bay here, we're looking at the, uh, at the compression. It looks like we're just, just under 200 PSI, so I think it looks, it looks about 190 from what I can see on the gauge there. So I'm going to run this test again and this time have the throttle open just to see if there's a difference. So for the second test, we'll reset the gauge. I'm just going to jump in the car again and this time I'm going to do it with the throttle open and see if there's a difference. So let's take a look and you can see hopefully on the gauge this time it's actually 210 psi so it is worth having that throttle open when you're checking the compression for me that's about where i'd like to see it this is a sort of a, a high compression engine so it will be more than a standard road one but the important thing we want to see is that the compression is the same across all four of the cylinders so what i'm going to do i'm going to make a note in my book now that cylinder one is 210 psi now that I've taken the reading from cylinder one, I can go ahead and take the reading from cylinder two. I'm doing this test cold with the compression test. You can do it either hot or cold. I think the only thing to, uh, to, to keep in mind is if you are keeping the test as a record, you want to make sure the conditions are the same each time. So if you do it hot the first time, I think from now on in, always do it hot. And equally, if you do it cold, always do it cold. If you've got a, a serious problem like a head gasket, or sort of a major oil leak or, or something like that it's probably best to just do the test cold so you don't risk any further damage to the engine so now I'm going to connect to cylinder 2 and the same as I've done previously I'm going to jump in the car we'll have the throttle open and we'll take another reading Okay, 
so for cylinder two we're seeing 200 psi so that's a little bit down on what we had for cylinder one so let me let me make a note of that now we'll move along to cylinder three so again we reset the gauge and just out of that one into this one and just again it's just hand tight and then we'll put the gauge just out of the way while we run the test okay So on cylinder, cylinder three, we're seeing 210 PSI again. So I'll just clear the gauge and we'll be ready for number four. So we'll hand tight and loosen this. And we'll be in to number four. Okay, so let's see the reading for four. Uh, number four is 200 PSI. With cylinder four done, that's now the test completed. So in cylinder one, I've got 210 PSI. I've got 200 PSI in cylinder two, 210 PSI in three, and then 200 PSI in four. So I have got a 10 PSI variance between cylinders. Most likely that's caused by the head gasket, or it could be a little bit of wear on the head. The, uh, the engine's done two years now of racing, so it's probably about time it had a refresh. So my next job will be taking the cylinder head off to get it checked over winter. That concludes this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and it's uh, proved useful to you. Please don't hesitate to ask any questions or ask for, ask for more details about the procedure. And as always, please like and subscribe to my channel. Many thanks. Bye.